things you did when you got here. I have an objection because 10 of the 29 electoral votes cast by Florida were cast by electors not lawfully certified. Is the objection in writing and signed not only by the member of the House of Representatives, but also by a senator? It is in writing, Mr. President. Is it signed by a senator? Not as of yes, Mr. President. In that case, the objection cannot be entertained. Mr. President, I object to the certificate from the state of Georgia on the grounds that the electoral votes were no not... Debate. There's no debate. And I object to the certificate uh, from the state of North Carolina based on violations of the voting there's rights no act debate. and there's no debate by the, the joint government. session. And I object because people are horrified by the overwhelming evidence. Section 18, of Title III right. of the United States Code prohibits debate. Um, I object. I've objected to the counting of the electoral votes of the state of Ohio. I object to the certificate from the state of Alabama. The electors were not lawfully certified. I object to the 15 votes from the state of North Carolina because of the massive voter suppression and the closing no of voting debate. polling booths. There is no the debate. There is no debate. 16 there is to no one. debate. And the massive the voter suppression that occurs to African-Americans. The general was suspended. I have an objection to the electoral votes. The objection is in writing, and I don't care that it is not it is not signed by a member of the Senate. I do not wish to debate. I wish to ask, is there one United States senator who will join me in this letter? There is no debate. The uh, objection is, is signed by a member of the House, but not yet by a member of the Senate. Well, it is over. Uh. <laughs> And when the House managers realized that the president's actual words could not have incited the riot, as you alleged in your article of impeachment, you attempted to pivot. You said that raising the issue of election security and casting doubt on the propriety of our elections was dangerous. One of the House managers, Mr. Cicilline, told you that this is not about the words Mr. Trump used in isolation. Rather, it is about the big lie the claim that the election was stolen. The House managers told you that it's the big lie that incited the riot, and that the big lie was President Trump's claim that the election was not a fair election, or that the election was stolen. Claiming an election was stolen, you were told, are words that are insightful to a candidate's followers and cause people to respond violently. Claiming an election was stolen, or not legitimate, is something that a candidate should never do because he or she knows, or should know, that such a claim and such words can actually incite violent insurrection, you were told. Well, it seems that the House manager's position must be actually a bit narrower than that. The House manager's position really is that when Republican candidates for office claim an election is stolen or that the winner is illegitimate, it constitutes inciting an insurrection, and the candidate should know it. But Democratic Party candidates for public elective office are perfectly entitled to claim the election was stolen or that the winner is illegitimate or to make any other outrageous claim they can. It is their absolute at all. And that is perfectly okay and is in no way incitement to an insurrection. And somehow, when Democratic candidates publicly decry an election as stolen or illegitimate, it's never a big lie. You've been doing it for years. But can you imagine telling your supporters that the only way you could possibly lose is if an American election was rigged and stolen from you? And ask yourself whether you've ever seen anyone at any level of government make the same claim about their own election. If Stacey Abrams doesn't win in Georgia, they stole it. It's clear. It's clear. And I would say, I say that publicly, it's clear. You can run the best campaign. You can even become the nominee. And you can have the election stolen from you. He knows he's an illegitimate president. He knows. He knows that there were a bunch of different reasons why the election turned out the way it did. Votes remain to be counted. There are voices that were waiting to be heard. And I will not concede. Respect and I respect where you're coming from and I respect the, the issues that you're raising. You're not answering the question. Do you think it was... I am. A, I, no, do, I, what, what I don't it? do... You're not using the word legitimate. There are still legitimate concerns over the integrity of our elections and of ensuring the principle of one person, one vote. I agree with tens of millions of Americans who are very worried 
that when they cast the ballot on an electronic voting machine, that there is no paper trail to record that vote. But constantly shifting vote tallies in Ohio and malfunctioning electronic machines, which may not have paper receipts, have led to additional loss of confidence by the public. This is their only opportunity to have this debate while the country is listening, and it is appropriate to do so. House Manager Castro no longer has to try to imagine it, thanks to the distinguished senator and others. It didn't have to be this way. The Democrats promised unity. They promised to deliver the very COVID relief in the form of $2,000 stimulus checks that President Trump called for. They should have listened to their own words of the past. I leave you with the wise words of Congressman Jerry Nadler. The effect of impeachment is to overturn the popular will of the voters. We must not overturn an election and remove a president from office except to defend our system of government or our constitutional liberties against the dire threat. And we must not do so without an overwhelming consensus of the American people. There must never be a narrowly voted impeachment or an impeachment supported by one of our major political parties and opposed by the other. Such an impeachment will produce the divisiveness and bitterness in our politics for years to come and will call into question the very legitimacy of our political institutions. The American people have heard the allegations against the president and they overwhelmingly oppose impeaching him. They elected President Clinton. They still support him. We have no right to overturn the considered judgment of the American people. Mr. Speaker, the case against the president has not been made. <coughs> there is far from sufficient evidence to support the allegations. And the allegations, even if proven true, do not rise to the level of impeachable offenses. Mr. Speaker, this is clearly a partisan railroad job. The same people who today tell us we must impeach the president for lying under oath almost to a person voted last year to re-elect the speaker who had just admitted lying to Congress in an official proceeding. The American people are watching and they will not forget. You may have the votes, you may have the muscle, but you do not have the legitimacy of a national consensus or of a constitutional imperative. This partisan coup d'etat will go down in infamy in the history of this nation. Thank you, Mr. Speaker. I yield back the balance of my time.